It had that wonderful sense of adventure. It wasn't traditional history, it wasn't how you remember it from A-level. Um, you had people doing subjects that, you know, frankly didn't even know were subjects within history. It is actually one of the best history departments at a university. Um, whenever I listen to, I often listen to Melvin Bragg in our time, always a Birkbeck professor on. Um, they're really knowledgeable, they really know what they're talking about and actually, you know, aside from the fact that it's easy to fit around work, it is an amazing history department. It's a very structured course. Uh, and needs to be so that you are properly set up to get the most out of it and develop your own intellectual interests. But you start with Group 1 courses, which are outlines of the major areas of historical study, modern history, modern Europe, modern Britain, medieval history, and so on. We have a wide range of provision for every possible interest in history, and we also run BAs in history and archaeology, with classics and so on. So there's a huge diversity of history that can be done, but the structure for all of it, as I say, is, is much the same. And then uh, you take group twos, uh, which are more specified uh, or specialised areas of study around a particular theme or period or area. And then you will take finally the group three, which is a much more primary source led type of teaching with documents, photographs, films or whatever it is included as part of the study in the classroom. You then round that off with a dissertation ideally so that you have a sort of you know fine-tuning but also sort of pyramid structure if you like of, of, of education building year on year to finish with a degree where you've really sort of honed in your interests and written something of original research. We are one of the best in the country and we are research-led, our teaching is research-led. Now what that means in reality is that when students come to Birkbeck they actually get the best academics teaching their own specialty. That makes a huge difference. Yeah, but actually you're completely right and it was actually extremely influential throughout Europe and America in particular. So I teach a number of undergraduate classes here at Birkbeck. I think one of my favorite ones is um, it's called um, History of Violence and what it looks at is it just looks at British and American uh, societies, 19th century all the way to the present, um, and it looks at violence within our culture. So it goes from everything from, of course, world wars all the way to drone warfare. The course I taught the other day was one of my favorite ones because it actually looks at resistance to violence. So we looked at the women of Greenham Common, and we look at, you know, well, okay, we're very, very violent society, but of course, there's also been these major movements against violence. And Students really, really love it. There's a great combination of people, which is part of Birkbeck's ethos as, have, as having a large proportion of mature students. You get so many different people, um, and they bring so many different attitudes and opinions about things that you might not get if you're just dealing with um, a cohort of 18-year-olds. Well, that's what I love most about it, really. I guess it's that there is a broad spectrum of people here from all walks of life so I mean from like me as 20, 20 year old to those who are surgeons and are just you know and, and doing a BA which I find brilliant and it has that kind of richness to it. Some of you also pointed up Charles's foreign policy last week and I think Stuart mentioned that in some detail. Um, I teach a course on the 17th century and the particular class that we're looking at this evening um, are called Rebellions and Revolutions. It's an undergraduate class that looks at English and Scottish history from the late part of the 16th century through to the revolution of 1689 and we're focusing in particularly on the Bill of Rights. But in this class what we want to do is look at that document more closely think about what people intended for that document when it was produced and we often find in these circumstances that what people intended for that document what contemporaries thought it was doing is actually quite different from the way that we've reflected on it from the 20th 21st century responsible for 1789 in large measure he could have stopped it 
So keep those ideas in mind as we go through. Birkbeck has got one of the best departments of history in the country. It's an extremely uh, well-established uh, department that dates back now for over 100 years. And we've had some really formidable scholars here, including people like Eric Hobsbawm, who many people have heard of, Richard Evans, Roy Foster, and I could carry on. Um, and today that tradition of great scholarship combined with teaching is very much part of the ethos. Anybody who comes here will get an exciting range of courses taught by lecturers who are very much uh, engaged with the research, uh, many of whom they're international figures in their own right, uh, and so it's an exciting place to be. Coming to Birkbeck from whatever background, you will be exposed to people of a huge variety of, of backgrounds and interests from all around the world because London's such an international city. We get younger people um, who are studying um, history maybe for the first time. Um, we have a lot of people who are working while they're doing their degrees. We particularly specialise in teaching students who want to do part-time degrees alongside their working commitments. Um, and the thing that I find particularly exciting about our class is the way that different generations and different social backgrounds are coming together in the classroom to focus on their interests and their love of history.